Well, mate, you're coming home <laughs> to the heat after getting a release early. Uh, tell us about the discussions and how it came about. Yeah, just to start with, really thankful that the Adelaide Strikers and, and Jason Gillespie and Tim Nielsen um, were really, really care, caring towards me and my family. Um, obviously, my wife's pregnant and, and due in the middle of December, so it makes it a little bit t t difficult being away for that for that time. So sort of approached them really early in the situation um, and explained what was going on and just sort of asked what, what ways we could get around it, and, and thankfully they were really understanding about the situation. Your numbers were, were good for, for Somerset. Do you feel your, your game is, is on track and how you feel you're batting? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Um, really enjoyed my time over in Somerset, um, playing some different formats, playing one-day cricket, four-day cricket, and, and, yeah, just sort of being free over there. Um, I always think it's a bit different batting over there because you sort of have the external critics away from you a little bit while you're learning your game and yeah it's just about learning your game on the run and enjoying the cricket and that's for me is enjoying my batting is the big one. Well, here you were captain over there the last couple of games for Somerset and another string to your bow but how did you find that for yourself for the, for the club and for yourself? Yeah it was obviously an honour to, to captain Somerset there's a lot of um, really good players and, and people who've captained um, but for me it was just about trying to be myself and, and captain it was a it was a tough scenario seeing as We'd lost a lot of guys to the 100 and injury and we had a really young side over there so it was, a, it was a great learning opportunity for me in my first professional captaincy journey to, to captain them and unfortunately we couldn't get a win um, while I was playing but um, yeah it was a great learning opportunity. Do you think, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was just saying, and, and just on that, you, you feel like now you're, you're very much, you're, you're growing again, you're evolving again, the two years since you went to the strikers you've come back now, you feel like you're evolving and growing as a cricketer, as a person? Yeah, I think the main thing for me is trying to grow as a person. Um, cricket's all well and good to, to be performing, but at the end of the day, we're all people. Um, and to be a good person is probably the big one for me. Um, cricket, I've always loved my cricket. I've always loved um, thinking about the game in different ways and trying to add to whoever's captain while I'm on the field. So hopefully I can keep adding to that and learning from, from the captains. Do you think Australia will be facing a 41-year-old Jimmy Anderson? next year in the Ashes and Stuart Broad like do you think they'll hang on or can you see emerging talents perhaps squeezing them out? Um, I can see a few emerging talents playing against some of them over there but just saw overnight Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad are still bowling beautifully over there at the Duke ball so um, it's going to be interesting to see if they're still going um, but yeah it's it's pretty incredible that a guy who's 41 years old can still be playing test cricket and performing well. Who's the pick of the you know you obviously around the county circuit. Is there any that caught your eye, up-and-coming batsmen or bowlers at all? Um, yeah, there was a few. Um, you put me on the spot there um, about who. But, um, yeah, it's just sort of you play so much cricket over there that you, some guys are on the days that you're playing against them, some guys aren't on. So it's sort of tough to, to pick out some really good good players. But I think the crops are, are strong over there and, and some really good young cricketers. Do you feel the hundreds working for them? What have, you, what have you made of that? Um, it's an interesting one because sort of down in Somerset there's no 100 teams so no one really embraces it down there in terms of the, the public. Um, talking to a few of the players it, it can be, I think they enjoy the franchise side of it compared to, to their, their club stuff and, and similar to the Big Bash over here doing what we did um, a few years ago now they're trying to build on that but yeah, it's, it's tough to, to watch sometimes because you don't really understand the graphics and I think if they, if they updated that a little bit, it might be a bit easier to understand. But I think it's, for, for me, it's just a, a 2020 with a few less balls. <laughs> um, Ren, you, um, you have been away for a long time. You've been uh, tri trips, tours to Pakistan, Sri Lanka, England. Um, coming back, uh, well, I, I, I say, what's the first thing you've got to do? You said you've already done this. You've got your new kid on, but what's that? When you're going to have a game of golf, what else are you going to do now that you're back? Is there much of a break before you get into cricket stuff? Um, that's probably up to Wade, and we haven't had that discussion about when I have to come back into to training and stuff. But um, no, I think for me, it's just being back with my family. Um, my dog was a big one. Seeing him last night um, was really exciting after for five months away. Um, he was whining. He slept on our bed the whole night. So um, no, it was exciting seeing our family and, and yeah, just getting back into life in Brisbane and, and the, the way the, the Brisbane is. Just on T20, so it's a, you, you, the strikers and, and it's been interesting traffic between Adelaide and, and Brisbane with Lenny going one way and you coming back the other way. Um, how do you feel, like what are you going to make bring to bring to the, to the heat in terms of you know, 
what are you going to do as a, as a, as a signing for Brisbane? I was sort of like Lenny and I have just traded, but without the official trade. Um, no, I just want to try and bring the bring what I bring is smile on my face. Um, hopefully, some good cricket here and there. Um, but yeah, just trying to bring some energy, bring some happiness to to the fans. Um, it's always what I try and bring to the to the crowd, and, and yeah, hopefully some performances on the board. So on that too, the draft coming up, um, have you, you've already been in using his time this morning beating jet lag. Uh, have a chat to Wade about who you've seen in England. Um, what are you thinking about that, that player was for potential teammates? Yeah, I think there's obviously a lot of guys in that draft, um, probably more than what would be normally um, if it was just sort of signing people on. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting concept. I'm really excited to watch that on um, on Sunday. But yeah, I've tried to try to give my little two cents worth to Wade. I'm not sure he'll listen to me because um, I can speak some dribble sometimes. But um, obviously, it's a it's a tough tough decision for them and and seeing seeing the strategy that will play out. Thank you. Beautiful.